Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, well, it's a moment of uh, great privilege and honor for us to have Shri Piyush Goelji, Honorable uh, Minister for Railway, Commerce and Industry with us. Unfortunately, due to some exigency, Shri Amit Shah ji is not able to make it, but we have the privilege of having Shri Piyush Goelji with us. May I request you to kindly give us a big round of applause for the Honorable Minister. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for joining us at a, such a short notice. And uh, may I request the President Fikhi Shri Sandeep Somaniji to present a planter to the Honorable Minister. <clears throat> Thank you so much, President. Now, to formally welcome uh, the Honorable Minister, may I request President Fiki to make his formal welcome address, sir. Shri Piyush Goelji, Honorable Railway, Commerce and Industry Minister, Mr. Rituraj Sinha, Chair, Fiki Private Security Industry Committee, and Group Managing Director, SIS India Limited, Ms. Uh, Manjari Sharohar, Advisor, Fiki Committee on Private Security Industry, Friends from Media, Industry, and Government. It is an honor to welcome PUSG to this Fiki conclave. The private security industry is a large and expanding sector globally. In India, it is still at a nascent stage and is likely to see exponential growth both in terms of manpower employed and market share due to rapid infrastructure and economic development. The industry has already emerged as one of the largest employers in India. It employs large number of people as security guards, mainly belonging to the BPL families, thereby providing means of livelihood to them. There are about 70 lakh security personnel currently employed in the industry, and the number is expected to grow by four to five lakhs people per year. The industry is estimated to reach 99,000 crores, 15.2 billion by next year, with a CAGR of around 20%. This is indeed a sunrise sector with potential to be the second largest employment generator in India. Private security guards are deployed in a variety of sectors to protect people and property such as commercial, institutional, and residential. Skilling and training are particularly important since many security guards are recruited from rural areas and are unfamiliar with many aspects of working in urban areas. With proper skilling and training, private security personnel can also provide substantial assistance to police for providing comprehensive and accurate investigative reports of incidents. Additionally, private security can help country protect countries' extensive range of infrastructure and share intelligence with law enforcement. Friends, there are only 144 police officers for every 100,000 citizens in India. India's police to population ratio lags behind most countries and the United Nations recommended ratio of 222. I believe a large workforce in the private security space can be utilized to make up for the low police to citizen ratio with careful policy interventions to identify non-care areas of police and security functions that could be outsourced so such agencies. Traffic management, senior citizen monitoring, outer periphery guarding of prisons and event security could be a few of them. Honorable Minister, I would like to take the opportunity to highlight a few focused areas for action which could help in realizing the true potential of this sector. One, proper enforcement of Private Security Agency Regulation Act. Two, curbing delays at the level of state controlling authorities in granting licenses to private security agencies. Three, different regulatory conditions in different states. Four, PPP approach where the industry could engage with law enforcement agencies. Industry also needs to blend manpower with technology for providing better service. With these word, war, words, I extend a warm welcome to all the delegates who have joined us for this program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, for setting up the context and uh, highlighting the promise and potential of this sunrise sector. 
going forward now may I request uh, the chair of uh, sticky private uh, security committee mr jitu rachana to deliver his team address respected dais <coughs> friends first of all on behalf of 50 lakh plus close to 65 lakhs actually private security industry workers more than 10000 micro small and medium enterprises that operate in the private security sector and lakhs of ex army ex police veterans that are a critical part of the sector on behalf of all of us let me welcome shri piyush goel ji cabinet minister for commerce industry and railways amongst us please give him a round of applause <laughs> shri piyush goel ji needs no introduction he is one of the youngest one of the most dynamic cabinet ministers the country has today a true change agent he has led successfully the complete transformation of the power sector in the last government he played a pivotal role in addressing gst and other issues in the previous government today he is leading one of the largest infrastructure development projects the world has seen as the indian railways looks to invest 50 lakh crore rupees in infra development over the next 10 years from trade negotiations as commerce minister to fdi relaxation and at the same time safeguarding the interest of the small and micro entrepreneurs that are the backbone of the indian economy shri piyush goel ji is truly a role model for young india it is a indeed a pleasure sir that you could accommodate this program in your busy schedule today the industry sorely misses the absence of our honorable home minister shri amit bhai shah ji at this event however we fully well understand his commitment towards far more pressing issues related to national security that ought to take priority over all else but sir once again we are overjoyed that you have come here you have tried to accommodate this program in your schedule and for that sir we owe you a big thank you and a big round of applause <laughs> sir talking a little bit about the private security sector our president has already touched upon it i just wanted to highlight that private security is amongst the top 5 employment generating sectors in the country it is also an an industry that supports a lot of micro entrepreneurs and small entrepreneurs almost more than 10000 licensed private security companies exist in the country it is possibly the largest resettlement avenue for our ex servicemen but other than that not many would know that the private security sector is greater than 10 billion dollars in absolute size it is contributing almost 10000 crores in taxes to the government growing at 16 to 18% per annum and truly sir if i would like to draw your attention sir truly this sector is an enabling sector a sector that creates jobs amidst slowdown and a sector that supports economic activity ranging from every hotel every school every rwa every establishment every mall government office or private today private security essentially is the first line of defense in the homeland security framework <coughs> sir even as private security agency regulation act was formulated way back in 2005 it is only between 2015 and 19 that the industry has received its due attention i would just like to highlight the tremendous work done by ministry of home affairs in terms of easing out the licensing related challenges giving clear direction towards the training standards 
and most of all resolving long outstanding issues of cash logistics industry through the model rules the mha has truly worked towards ease of doing business for the customers and for the service providers in the private security industry similarly sir the labor ministry in the last 5 years has been kind enough to recategorize security industry workers as skilled workers as a result of which the pay rate for these people has seen a substantial improvement the skill development ministry in the last few years has come out to support this industry widely through the pmkvy scheme and also the recognition of prior learning scheme to assist training and standards improvement in the sector but most of all sir the most important input or contribution i believe from the government and the honorable prime minister modi has been that on this holy 2019 holy the prime minister personally addressed lakhs of private security guards across the country through an audio which facility a first of its kind a first of its kind initiative where a prime minister of india reached out to the last man on the street to acknowledge and compliment his services <laughs> sir we are deeply indebted for all the support the private security industry has received from the government of india there are ongoing challenges like there are in any sector but we are very confident that with the support guidance and look after by the government of india we will continue to create jobs and secure india and build globally competitive businesses in the private security sector thank you once again sir and we welcome you once again to this event thank you mr sinha for highlighting the promise and potential of this sector and tracing the growth trajectory which has happened in last 4 uh, 5 years from 2015 to 19 uh, now going forward may i request the honorable minister shri priyesh goel ji to deliver his inaugural address my good friend uh, mr sandeep sumani president of fiki mr ritraj sinha chair of the fiki committee on private security industry also my colleague in the bharatiya janata party i don't know whether that's all right to say or yeah <laughs> his father is a very senior leader of the party also member of parliament from bihar and one of those who has been part of the jan sangh and then the bharatiya janata party family for decades and decades and during the election rituraj really helped me a lot uh, in managing several of the management campaign management areas and i saw some of the capabilities that owners of private security agencies have during that period so i think uh, your industry is in safe hands that much i can certainly vouch say Ms. Manjri Jaruhar, former IPS, uh, who is an advisor to the Fiki Committee on Private Security Industry, Mr. Sumit Gupta, Senior Director of Fiki, Mr. Dilip Janoy, all the senior leaders, captains of industry, who are present here in the room today, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. not an easy task to stand in for mr amit shah when you know the audience is suddenly going to take a dip in their enthusiasm because i'm sure a room in fiki with people standing on all sides is not for me it's for mr amit shah i'm very conscious of that <laughs> but uh, normally amit bhai is extremely extremely particular about any program that he accepts but very pressing engagements which are which cannot be even discussed here but which are which were beyond his control he was not able to make it for today's program and sends his best wishes to fiki and to all of you conveys his uh, regrets that he could not be a part of today's engagements but uh, he did spend some time with me on the phone to guide me on what were his thoughts about the industry and i hope i can do half as good a job as he would have done i'm sure over here his sheer presence is very powerful actually it's 
it gives you a sense of security. <laughs> but uh, I do hope uh, we can have a useful dialogue at some later date, even with Mr. Amit Shah, where we can invite some of your uh, captains of this industry to have an informal chat and raise the issues that have also been raised today. I'll try to see how much of it we can address. But while, Rituraji, you did mention about the holy address of the Prime Minister, I think you forgot to mention the very important role that all of you have done and all of you have played in our election campaign, starting from the leader of the principal opposition party, where uh, we brought the chokidar in the center stage of the entire election campaign. But the people chose to be the chokidar to save this country from corruption and save this country from inefficiency and inept politicians and became the chokidars of this country. The maybe chokidar campaign will go down in history as probably one of the most successful campaign themes, which involved millions and crores of people all across the country in making this election almost a mass movement to demonstrate the people's power as security guards for this country. So your, your industry is a little bit threatened by the people of India. But thank you very much uh, for the good work that the industry has done. Thank you very much, I would say, to the Prime Minister for giving dignity to the work that the security guards of this country do. And traditionally, while we were all very, very enamored, very grateful to the army, to the armed forces, paramilitary forces, to the police, I think for the first time, that dignity was given to the private security guards. And rightly so, for contributing to the nation's development, contributing to the nation's security, for ensuring we can go for a meal at midnight without having to fear for our security, maybe in a hotel, maybe in a restaurant, maybe take a walk around cyber hub in Gurgaon, Gurugram, without having to worry about our security. Because clearly we can't have the government provide security at every nook and corner of the country. And these 70 lakh people growing at this fast pace truly play a very, very important role. I would think, um, government establishments, private companies, large and small corporations, businesses, five-star hotels, shopping malls. I mean, the list would be endless. Residential, gated communities, societies. All of us are clearly moving out so freely and openly because we know there is that security guard standing there to protect us. Of course, those good old days are gone when we would hear that ja, the, the, I don't know, some, the youngsters in the room may not relate to it, but Rajan Mittal can clearly relate to the, yeah, all the senior citizens. <laughs> no offense, man. I'm also close to becoming a senior citizen now. <laughs> but all the, all our, our age group people here will remember how the, what that power of that jagte raho uh, guard walking around in the streets, just tapping his uh, chadi on the, on the ground. What power that had. And I don't know how many films would have been made where you would see this kind of a guard walking around with his chadi. But this uh, service that you provide, I think has a lot of potential, has a lot of potential to grow exponentially. In fact, uh, one of the thoughts that came out from your earlier discussions with me was about unclogging some of the relatively less uh, critical areas where government deploys security to the private sector so that the government's forces can be more effectively used 
in frontline security, in uh, keeping our streets safe, and keeping our uh, more critical establishments safe. And that's an area that uh, we'll certainly look at from the government side. Uh, me, uh, for me in the railways, for example, I have a growing rail network where I could redeploy my RPF uh, officials more effectively and possibly some of the simpler uh, production units, the, uh, the non-essential areas where we could deploy private security guards could be a way forward to also meet the growing needs of security of government and government establishments. Of course, your contribution to job creation is legendary. But one contribution I personally want to acknowledge, which many of you may not necessarily be aware, is during the demonetization days. I remember all the cash vans were also handled largely by private security agencies. And I remember having long meetings, long discussions, and at times even forcing my way through when I had to insist that don't bother about the payments, don't bother about the contracts, but just make sure you are on the job 24 by 7, taking money into the banks, taking uh, re-replenishing money into the ATMs. And uh, I think that was one critical time when I saw the capacity of the industry to be able to come up to a challenge and ensure the entire banking sector is able to meet the needs of replenishment of uh, the demonetized currencies. Uh, well, there will always be a few cases and some of my media friends may look up some old case and find one or two misdemeanors. But I personally believe that as a nation, we need to get out of this cynical attitude where we pick up one or two misdemeanors exaggerate the problem, keep showing the problem on, on media, on television, in the newspapers, and actually running down institutions and running down the good work that large sections of industry and large sections of people do. And I think in that sense, Prime Minister Modi's uh, clarion call from the ramparts of the Red Fort to recognize, respect, listen to, and address the concerns of wealth creators was truly very heartwarming. And I think for all of us in industry, it really was the way forward. And for all of us in government, a clear signal that we got to respect and recognize the huge contribution of industry in different sectors, more so as we are talking today about the private security industry uh, uh, and the potential going forward and the good work that they're doing. I think I can clearly, on behalf of the government, mention here that we recognize the important role that uh, all of you are playing in securing the new India that each one of us is working for. And going forward, your role is only going to get more and more critical, more and more important. You did mention a few things about uh, the problems of the industry. I think some of this will have to be sorted out mutually by industry and the private security agency business. For example, and I don't mind uh, being a little blunt about the role of industry because I think we in industry have also let down the system quite often. For example, we have an act, the Private Security Agencies Regulation Act, which clearly has some laid down guidelines, which insist that you pay minimum wages, which insists that you pay ESIC to provide health cover for the family of the security guard. You make sure you put in money into his provident fund account to ensure some security, social security in his old age. Now, some of these conditions, probably in the charm of saving a few rupees or underpaying a security guard, tempts industry, big and small, to often take unrecognized agencies. And I think that's a role that FICI and all other industry bodies that we in industry should also play to ensure that we don't allow that kind of security guards or agencies to provide services in our housing colonies, in our residential complexes. After all, I would urge you to think, go back to your residential colony and check up the agency's credentials. And I promise you, 
70-80% of us will find that the agency is an unrecognized agency. May not be paying minimum wages. Ask the security guard. After all, he's your brother or sister. He's a part of our country. He also deserves a decent quality of life. And, and when we are seeing in front of our eyes a security guard, maybe in slippers, because the, these, some of these unrecognized agencies don't provide good uniform or uh, shoes, without proper uh, equipment to provide security, is ultimately going to cause you harm. After all, he would not be trained. He would not have the requisite uh, knowledge about uh, security to ensure that in the event of a problem, what he has to do. And unless all of us participate in making this a movement, in, and, and friends from the media should actually educate the people of India to ensure that whoever we are paying to provide security, now whether you pay 12,000 rupees or you pay 15,000 rupees, that 3,000 is not very big for our housing colony or our society. All of us can pitch in and put in that little extra money. But three or four things will be the outcomes of that. You will be giving a life of dignity to the person who is, after all, guarding you and your children and your families. You will be ensuring that a person who is properly validated, verified comes there and he doesn't tomorrow cause any harm to your family through some unrecognized or unknown agency. You will be ensuring that he's a trained person who knows what has to be done in an emergency. And I do hope your industry is ensuring adequate training for all the people in this industry. And lastly, you will provide motivation for that person. After all, if he's feeling secure that his family's interests are taken care of, he has enough money to live a reasonably decent quality of life. His old age social security has been taken care of. His health care will be taken care of and the entire families. Personally, I think he'll be a far more motivated guard and not someone who's maybe too timing or coming into work at night in your place but just sleeping away the whole night because in the day he has to do some other work to make two ends meet. And therefore, it will be good on the part of all of us, business, and for that matter, every citizen of the country to ensure that whoever is a security guard anywhere, does, does he come from an accredited, properly recognized agency? Does the guard get minimum wages? Does he get the necessary promised benefits of, uh, of the job? And if we were to do that, to my mind, the 70 lakh will become at least two crore people and probably become one of the largest <laughs> job creator in the industry. And the difference will be very small, but it will be a defining difference. It will have the largest impact for the small amount of money that we will additionally pay. And in that uh, same sense, I would like to advise or request the industry, if we can put out into public domain on a website or, or through some media that you as agency may regulate and bring out. All the authorized agencies, all the people working in each of the agencies, the wages, the minimum wages at least paid, the ESI, PF contribution given. Maybe it need not be a public domain data, so you don't have complaints that people are stealing from each one of you. But it could be a regulator, self-regulator within yourself who could ensure that that data is there. We could work with industry to ensure that that data is provided, guaranteed, and ensured, validated by the industry. So we can look at a public-private partnership to ensure both these aspects on the part of the people of India and industry, ensuring that we take it from authorized agencies, and on the part of industry to ensure that we don't, let's say, skim from what we are required to pay to these people. Uh, some of the suggestions that Mr. Somani gave about the implementation of the act really relate to uh, uh, an effort that all of us have to do. After all, government regulation and government coming to try and ensure the implementation of these type of laws will only actually harm the system much more. I mean, you'll have a government inspector, let's say, coming to your factory to check these records is worse than doing it yourself. 
and I would think that if we can create some kind of a body which is more self-regulatory, the implementation of the act can be ensured much better. Now, I'm sure the larger organizations or institutions must be taking care of this, but it can become a people's movement across the country. And for that, whatever help is required from government, we'll be more than happy to support any such initiative, either from the home ministry or wherever else you require such support. The delays in licenses that uh, Sandeep ji talked about is a very serious issue. I would urge you or maybe your team to qu quickly come up with a framework in which we can tell all the states that this will be the online registration process. This is the minimum documentation. And I think our Home Ministry colleagues can actually notify that to ensure that in a time-bound manner, registration is granted. Ensure that if registration is not granted within a certain time, it's deemed registration. And if they have to reject any registration, there has to be a speaking order with reasons and writing. Vivek, kindly take note of that work out a format in consultation with industry. And I think we should advise all the states to ensure. And I think that will motivate even those unregistered people to try and get into the formal framework. In that, if there's any law which is holding back registrations or any simplification of the law that the industry requires, we are happy to listen to the industry's uh, demands. I'm happy to be, play the role of a facilitator. I remember there used to be some restrictions in when I was running industry, there were some restrictions about number of people or there were some issues that kept back people from registering for license. But if there are any such things, we are happy to listen to that and resolve that. But we do want a more organized framework within which the industry works to ensure that uh, due care is taken in the people who are working in this industry. I would also urge you to seriously look at training in a bigger way. I'm not so sure how well these guards are trained. Personally, I'm not even very sure about the equipment that they have on them and how well they know how to handle even a baton. I think even a baton can be very effective. Most times, I think anywhere in the world when we go, it's just the baton itself which provides a lot of uh, confidence when you see a good cop with a baton in his hand. That baton can do wonders if he's a properly trained guy. Uh, I don't want to bring in any extraneous thing, but I think the training that we get in our RSS Shaka is far superior to some of the training that I think the security guards get. May not to suggest that you all Shaka, mein bhejo, that's not my intention. But it won't be bad, we will learn something there. उनकी बौद्धिक भी सुधार देंगे, उनकी शारीरिक क्षमता भी सुधार देंगे, लेकिन that's that's not the purpose of my raising that issue. I'm only trying to mention that training is a very essential element of the work that your industry does, and I think a little more investment, a little more focus, effort, possibly even certification of the guard which gives him one star, two star, three star, something like that we can work out in consultation with the Home Ministry, which will help him also with promotion avenues, help him with better income avenues, and maybe my society can choose, I want three star or four star guards who have gone through a certain level of training, who have certain level of experience, and don't make it a non-merit-based, time-based promotion or a time-based star category like we have in government. Don't pick up the wrong practices of government into, your, uh, into the private industry. But I, I would think some such innovative ideas coming from industry will actually empower this industry going forward. And uh, uh, we have Vivek Bhardwaj here from the Home Ministry. Are you handling this security? Great. So he will be your single point contact. He's worked with me in the coal ministry, so I can vouchsafe for his competence. And... Uh, a person who's an action-oriented man. So you'll find quick decisions and quick actions coming out of that. And of course, Amit Bhai, I don't need to speak about his ability to do action.
another issue that you came up with is different regulators and states. I really don't know much about the subject, but if your ENY report, which you are preparing, also can highlight what the problem is and how that is affecting you, we'll try to dovetail all these states' uh, regulations into a more uniform framework, while it's a state subject, I think. So possibly I can't force them, but aste aste janta Bharat ki itne states ko BJP or NDA ki taraf leke ja rahi hai, ki maybe it may not be that difficult to implement it also. There are a few bastions left in the east, possibly. I don't know for how long. But uh, Vivek, we should really persuade the states to try and simplify this whole effort and this whole system so that uh, we, we generate more enthusiasm amongst the industry also to come within the ambit of regulation. Of course, uh, one thing I can assure you, if all of you come into the ambit of regulation, that we will talk to the bankers, which is an area of concern that uh, Rituraj has highlighted, other people have highlighted in the past, about your GST problem, where you are not getting paid by the uh, customer in time, but your GST has to be paid on the due date. While I can't change the due date of payment of GST, two things we can do. We can look at a, an effort to ensure that timely payments are made by all the government organizations. That's something if you flag off which are the agencies which delay payment by, from the government or semi-government. There we can help you to try and speed up the payments, point one. Point two, we can talk to the bankers to have a product specifically dedicated to your industry where overdues from a, for a regulated entity from, an, uh, from a company or from a client which is of some repute or some creditworthiness or standing can be securitized because you have to pay your wages on the, at the end of the month. You have to pay your GST within the next 30 days. So I clearly understand that that could be a pain point, the large amounts of working capital. I'm happy to request my senior colleague Nirmala ji to talk to the bankers. I'm happy to, on your behalf, as a part of DPIIT, to promote your industry because that's also a part of my job, to help you get the payments speeded up on the one end or get a proper financing organized for the industry. <laughs> you should also actually look up those people who are running these services in an unregulated framework because ultimately industry will have to help yourself. You have to become the whistleblowers so that wherever unregulated entities are providing the service, government can take action on them. So I think that's another area where you can help yourself and uh, help us to help you. But clearly, bringing everybody within the ambit of regulation will be good for the nation as a whole. I have one area where I see some ex-servicemen, or at least you, some of you look like ex-servicemen to me. We have ex-servicemen who also provide a lot of service and actually it's a great avenue for ex-policemen, ex-servicemen to provide this kind of a service. I would urge uh, those who are from the ex-servicemen category to kindly see that they also do their job in a more efficient and effective manner. Because uh, in the coal industry, for instance, and Vivek also is aware of that, we had a lot of security agencies from the ex-servicemen category who provide service there and we have even given them some certain special privileges. But it's being misused. That privilege is being misused to only get a license and then not engage ex-servicemen, but engage very low, lowly paid people who are not even paid the full service uh, value. And because they have a reservation of ex-servicemen, neither can there be competition, and therefore that misuse can't be curbed. Vivek, I think this is an area you must address talk to the ex-servicemen agencies, and wherever such practices are found, we'll have to look at blacklisting those agencies so that there's level playing field and there's more fair and good work than all those who are providing the private security agency work. But it's a, overall, it's a huge industry. I'm told it's going to be a globally $240 billion industry. You mentioned about $10 billion in India. Given India's growing relevance in the world, the large population, and the $5 trillion target, and then the next $10 trillion target that we are aiming for, 
I think your industry can make rapid strides, can really leapfrog, not only in India, but also internationally, given the fact that you would have a good large scale within the country. You can look at good training coming in from the best practices around the world and then become the provider of these facilities in other parts of the world. So I would urge the industry to actually not only look at the 20% growth within India, but also expand yourself, go extend yourself across the borders. I know that some of the companies here have uh, international operations also. While, of course, uh, some amount of FDI is allowed, some foreign companies have come into India also. But uh, we do have a home ministry restriction by which we don't allow more than 49% uh, foreign ownership in the security, private security agencies so that we can ensure it's controlled by Indians. And that uh, regulation is being respected and is being followed by the government of India. So you are somebody who's doing a huge amount of work for us. Thank you very much to all the chokidars, to all the persons behind a safe and secure environment for me, for my family, for my work, and for all the businesses across the country. I do hope you will continue to serve the nation with the same diligence, serve the banking sector, serve industry with the same diligence, with the same commitment, with newer and newer technologies coming into play, better and better personnel who will ensure a safer future for the country at the base level. For the rest, you can be rest assured, Mr. Amit Shah and the government of India and the Prime Minister Narendra Modi will ensure that this country is safe this country is united. This is one country with one constitution. This is one country with one law of the land across the country. And for that, the security and the unity and integrity of the country is safe in the hands of Prime Minister Modi, in the hands of Mr. Amit Shah. The first line security and defense, I know, is safe in the hands of all our dear Chokidar brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for sharing your vision, which indeed has been is very encouraging. Sir, you highlighted some of the areas uh, of good governance, training, wages. Uh, I would like to mention that on behalf of PIKI that it has been our endeavor to look at the compliance in the sector and follow such practices. As advised by you, uh, we'll work uh, closely with the Ministry of Home Affairs. Mr. Bhadwaj has been very supportive. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Vivek Bhadwaj. You have been very supportive of our uh, actions and we'll continue to engage with Ministry of Home Affairs. Uh, with that, I uh, request Ms. Manjari Jaruhar, Advisor Fiki uh, Committee on Private Security, to deliver her closing address. Shri Priyush Goelji, Honorable Minister of Railways, Commerce and Industry, Mr. Sandeep Somani, President Fiki, Mr. Rituraj Sinha, Chair Fiki uh, Committee on Private Security Industry, Mr. Sumit Gupta, Senior Director Fiki, all my colleagues from the law enforcement agencies, friends from industry and media. We are indeed very grateful to you, sir, for uh, coming uh, and to address this gathering at a very short notice. Let me assure you, sir, that uh, this gathering is always happy to hear you. You are a frequent uh, visitor to, the, uh, to FIKI, and uh, you have always been placing the view of the government to the various uh, programs which you have attended here. We are happy to hear that uh, you think so highly of uh, the private security industry, and you have outlined so many positive steps which we can work on and we can move forward with that. With all the problems which we have, this uh, industry is growing exponentially, and we look forward to the day when a lot of other problems which you have been already highlighted before you are also sorted out. My only recommendation to you, sir, is that in the Ministry of Home Affairs, it would be good to open a separate cell which would look after all the problems of this growing industry because now it is high time that we pass all the regulations, we make sure that the industry can gr grow forward in the direction which you plan to achieve. I'd like to thank all the members of the media 
all the members of the private security industry who are here, here and all the persons who are on the dais who have been here, who have addressed all of you. I look forward to a meaningful dialogue the whole day today. It is unfortunate that uh, Sri Amit Shah Ji, Honorable Home Minister, could not join us today, but he has made a lot of uh, contribution. We hope that with all our delegations, he will be able, uh, with all the delegations which are planned, he would be able to do more for this industry. Whatever Mr. Piyush Goel Ji has uh, outlined today is extremely heartening, extremely satisfying, looking at GST, looking at the issue of professionalizing, and finally, the fact that you have said that you would like to employ more and more private security industry in the railway ministry, it is also very encouraging and heartening. I'd really like to thank you on behalf of everybody, sir. And in the end, the Prime Minister has been talking about the five trillion economy which India should achieve by 2024. I assure you, sir, that the private security industry will give its full support to this endeavor of the government. And we would like to be your partner in this development process in taking the nation forward. Thank you, sir.